Hi, this is James Glass with James Glass Company and in this short video I'm going to show you the importance of building a temporary load-bearing wall when you have to do work on uh, an actual uh, load-bearing wall. We're in a 1979 modular uh, home, typical light construction. Uh, it's made out of wood which was pretty typical at the time. 2 by 4 is like these and 16 inch centers all the way around the house. And what happened here was the house suffered some water damage and two of the 2 by 4s were uh, compromised due to rot and decay and so we needed to you know fix those and resheet the house, re-drywall. This is a this is the master bedroom here in this house and the subfloor was also damaged. It's half inch ply over three quarter inch MDF and we ripped up all the MDF because it's a very bad subfloor. MDF is this particle board. You can see some of it right here. This is the MDF and this is the particle board. I'll be putting down a three quarter inch tongue and groove flooring plywood product and uh, you can even see a little bit of the water stain. See how it's dark right here? And this, and this, this wasn't rotten here where we replaced the half inch subfloor there it was rotten. This was still acceptable, it just dried out. And of course I'll glue and laminate the three quarter inch over the half inch. Um, it'll be nice and strong. So we we didn't have any problems with the joists. They were two by eights on 16 inch center. They were okay. The rim band was okay. That's the thing the joist goes into. The trusses were okay. This was sort of an engineered truss from the modular company made out of two by sixes, no problem. So in this case, the structural decay with just these two 2x4s and the sole plate and this is called the top plate. And if you look really closely, this is sort of interesting, you'll notice that my top plate is a half an inch higher than their top plate. And the reason being is that, <laughs> it's kind of bizarre, the modular company actually set the trusses on top of the drywalled roof. If you look over here, you'll see the drywall. Uh, I hope you can hope you can kind of get a cap capture that. The drywall actually sits on top of the original top plate, and then they drop the trusses on. I guess it was approved. A little unusual. Um, normally, you don't use drywall as a load-bearing member, but they did in this house in 1979. So there was no reason to put a half-inch spacer up there. I just went ahead, and since this section of wall, you, let me stand back and kind of get an idea. This entire section of load-bearing wall is being rebuilt. I just went ahead and brought the top plate right to the trusses. So to do that, Josh built this. Uh, there's a temporary little sill plate, sole plate down at the bottom, and these two by fours go up to the trusses. This is about 18 inches from the wall. That's a perfectly acceptable cantilever. Over here for a little extra support, he put this one is bearing load of that truss all the way down while we took the wall, uh, the real wall out. And this one's just uh, tacked on at the side and it sort of makes a little L shape um, here to help reinforce it. Uh, it was probably unnecessary, but we went ahead and did it anyway. And then the load is carried down to the floor. So with these two 2x4 two temporary supports in place, we went ahead and did all the demolition on the wall. And now, um, it's the weekend, Josh is off, and I'm, I'm here working, and I'm going to go ahead and, I already put one of the load-bearing members back in, and now I'm going to put the second one in, 16 inches on center, they line up with the joists, and when I do that, I'll pull the temporary wall down. And that's, that's how you, uh, that's how you fix a load-bearing wall. You, uh, you build yourself a temporary load-bearing wall, support the load above it, do your work, and uh, then you pull your temporary wall down and life is good. Oh, after the building inspector, of course, says life is good.